to challenge our beliefs in Rotary, but we also want to preserve the foundation. And when you think of Rotary and our pillars of service, those pillars have not changed and nor will they probably change in the history of our involvement with Rotary. But the foundation around those pillars, the structure we build around them is in some cases ready for a renovation. And it might be ready for a modernization. Maybe it's a quick coat of paint. Maybe it's just a bit of refurbishing or maybe it's some uplifting and brightening up. Maybe it's modernizing and maybe for some, it's a complete overhaul. <laughs> we gotta just stop doing what we're doing because we're starting to, to fade away. So whatever that looks like for your club, um, you know, preserve your foundation, honor the history, honor the members that have, you know, have built the club to what it is today, while still looking at it from a fresh set of eyes in a modern world and looking to who might be willing to move into that house in the near future. And then striking up an innovation committee and sharing ideas, again, keeping that conversation going. So in order to do that, it's, you know, maybe you dedicate some meetings to just some innovative thinking or you keep innovation on your agenda. Some way, keep the conversation going, keep the innovation and the thoughts flowing forward from there. And the last bullet point really around the inspiration is, is just what else can you do? Inspiration happens in different ways with different people and your way of being inspirational and, and innovative is going to be just right for your club. Um, but I would challenge you to, to take some of that and bring it into your club and start to think differently about how we are and who we are in our Rotary world today. So I'm going to now turn it over to Juliana, and Juliana is going to walk us through a PowerPoint on some uh, innovative ways on recruiting and uh, retaining members. Well, let's see if I can do this right the first time I attempt this. Oh, okay. All right. Can everyone see that? <clears throat> yes. All right. Uh, so, uh, like Angela said, I'm the new generation coach. Um, I guess you could call me the next generation of uh, Rotary. Um, I'm under 40, but just by a hair. Uh, <laughs> um, so um, we, the committee put together basically, um, you know, some slides that would just kind of, um, you know, <sighs> talk about what we could do to, um, you know, boost membership a little bit. And the first thing we need to do is, um, you know, kind of do a little bit of a reality check. Um, you know, we need to be honest with ourselves that, uh, you know, membership has been declining and has been since 2005. Um, the current uh, membership recruitment model that we use uh, isn't working like it used to. So, you know, it's, it, it's time to, to sort of think, okay, well, that isn't working. So, we need to change tactics a little bit and what can we do differently to um to attract new members and younger members for that matter um you know the district isn't going to uh necessarily find members for us it's up to each individual club to take ownership of that and recruit members but they are here to support our recruitment efforts and our ideas and i'm not going to read these slides to you so um we did talk before the webinar today that we are going to put them up on the district site so if you want to go back to these afterwards um we will make those available for you um and i'm just trying to click down to my next screen and of course it's not letting me there we go um so the first thing we want to do is you know vis visualize the uh the possibilities here you know um and I can't find my mouse, it's gone. <laughs> um, so you wanna consider some things. Um, <clears throat> you know, your ideal club size and image. Um, you know, yes, all of our clubs have um, gotten smaller, but do they need to be as big as they once were? You know, what do you think a, a healthy size club for your particular club is? Um, social media is a, a big thing for, now, uh, for, for us, for all clubs now. Um, and, you know, it's something that, everybody should be embracing because that's how we get a lot of information and uh, and news out there. Um, so, you know, that plays a big role uh, in 
your presence in the community, but as well um, as your club image as well. So if you're trying to, you know, attract a younger member, um, embracing social media is going to be probably one of the first steps you'd want to do there. Um, the other thing to keep in mind here is, you know, number of members that are going to be required to support any fundraising or service projects. So, um, you know, if you if you've historically done really big events, maybe only one or two a year, and you need you know, a lot of all hands on deck, then yeah, you know, you're probably going to want to be recruiting um, younger members that are going to be, you know, have time to devote to those bigger projects. Um, if not, maybe you need to think about um, scaling back some of the size of the projects and doing something that's a little bit smaller, a little, not necessarily less important, but maybe a little more simplistic that is going to be easier to, to, uh, to pull off. Um, are these in the right order? I feel like I can't see my other ones. So I'm hoping these are in the right order. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> I can't seem to get my mouse. So, um, so what if we plan for evolution? Um, ask yourselves, you know, what needs to change in order for our clubs to grow and evolve? So, um, you know, one of the things that we've talked a lot about at our committee here is to, you know, shift our, some of the wording or some of the uh, vocabulary that we use. So instead of calling the meetings, which, you know, let's be honest, especially in 2020, we're all kind of meeting out, especially with Zoom, um, you know, call them gatherings, you know, and, and you know, the idea is we want to create those connections and, and make them meaningful. So, you know, meetings can kind of sound dry and boring, boring um, but if they were gatherings and maybe we were doing something a little more hands-on, I think people would find value in that and want to participate, want to be involved. Um, you know, another thing that um, my particular club in Brantford is doing is we've recently expanded the membership types. So we've introduced, just as an example, a family membership and a corporate membership. So I'm sure like other, um, you know, Rotarians, you probably have a spouse or maybe a parent that's, um, that's uh, you know, uh, come out to uh, events. Uh, you know, I know I volunteer my husband that he's coming out to all of our events with us. Um, so, you know, he's not a Rotarian, but, you know, he's at, every, he's by my side. He's, he's absolutely helping us with our events, you know. So um, that's something to think about. Um, Flexibility as well as, well as um, you know, the types of uh, meetings that you have or, or where you might meet, um, that's going to make it attractive to younger members as well. Um, so those are all things to kind of keep in mind when you're thinking about recruiting what that member, that new member might look like. I keep wanting to, there we go. Um, so this was something that uh, we thought was a great idea. Um, cultivate or create a guest list and invite those potential new members to come to your gatherings, um, not so much your meetings all the time. So um, if you're doing, um, you know, a, sorry, I thought, sorry, that's my four-year-old. <laughs> um, if you're doing something like, um, you know, a social or a fellowship type meeting once a month, you know, put out, um, uh, you know, cultivate that guest list and then put out a meeting invite to the, to, to have them come out and join you. Um, you know, the idea is you want to see, you know, what Rotary is all about. So we don't want to be just, um, you know, kind of attending those dry meetings where we're taking care of club business sometimes. Um, if you've invited a really interesting guest speaker that you think might be really engaging, those are the meetings or gatherings that you should be promoting. So, you know, put that, make a Facebook post or a Twitter post and, and get the word out that you've got a really great meeting coming up and you'd love to see some guests uh, join you. Um, build a friend of Rotary volunteer list. So again, it's not just about going to those weekly meetings. It's about getting out there and doing in your community. So if you've got an upcoming event, invite those potential members to, to come out and, and help out, you know, take a, take a volunteer shift and, and come out and see what we're really all about. So Juliana, you muted yourself.
So if you can hear me, Juliana, and you want to go back one slide, I can continue on for you. I don't know how I, I can't unmute you. I'm not sure if maybe Susan can. I'm trying. Okay. I can't unmute her either. <laughs> no, not she's not sure what's happening. Can't hear you. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna. Um, oh, there we go. Can you hear oh, me? Okay. She's back. I just can't see my mouse. So it's the weirdest thing that. <laughs> I think you have to go back up one slide. Yeah, and it's not letting me. There, there we go. go. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I did that. Sorry, guys. Um, so the next thing that we want to do is, you know, where should we be looking for new members? Um, and, you know, within our own membership, you know, we are our best, um, you know, recruiters, basically. Um, but, you know, we should be giving our members maybe some tools or ideas about where we could be looking for the next generation. Um, so again, online platforms, social medias, maybe some followers that are particularly engaged, maybe someone that's come out to a lot of events or been supporters of your fundraising initiatives, um, you know, different sectors uh, within your community. You know, you tend to start to see the same names coming up all the time. Those are the people that you should be reaching out to, inviting them to your meetings and, you know, giving them a taste of what Rotary really is. And, and you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but, um, you know, if they come out and they feel engaged, um, I think that's, how you know you can win those potential members over and they're gonna to want to join. And then onboarding and retention. Um, so you know you want to determine what the objectives of someone joining your club are. And you want to make sure that you know any role assigned yeah, in the club is gonna match what their objectives are as well. So um, you know from personal experience in our club, we've had feedback from new members that say, you know, sometimes they're not sure what all the committees do, or it's overwhelming, um, you know, trying to join committees and figure out what, you know, what their role is. Um, so, you know, that onboarding process of, of sharing that information and, and taking the time to really, you know, sort of present that information and get a feel for what they think their role is going to be within the club is really important. And again, you know, we want to make it fun. So, you know, making sure that they get involved with projects or fellowship events is really, really important. So how do we get started? Um, you know, have an innovation idea share gathering. So, you know, I know a lot of clubs, our club, my club included, um, you know, you have a membership committee. Um, you know, maybe it's, this is a separate committee, maybe it's a subcommittee of that membership committee, but you want to strike up an innovation committee. Um, the, your teams um, or pods, I know uh, some groups call or some clubs call them pods, you know, challenge them to think outside the box and, and get creative with meetings. So instead of just having weekly, you know, meetings, maybe take one of those meetings and do something a little bit different. Um, it could be, you know, um, Angela had some really great suggestions or examples, um, you know, they recently because we've been meeting on Zoom for months and months, um, they all decided during a nice, um, you know, week of, of weather, they decided, you know what, we're going to meet in person, socially distanced, of course, um, but they went on a hike, you know. Um, I've been to some fellowship meetings where, you know, they're wine tastings and stuff. So again, you're still getting together, you're still, you know, talking about Rotary, fundraising, whatever it is, but you're doing it in a different venue, maybe in a different format, and it's fun and it's different and, um, you know, it's keeping members engaged. Um, and lastly, you want to recruit a membership innovation coach. So, um, you know, take some time to think about or identify some members that you think might have some really good ideas and want to take ownership of this and, and get your other members sort of inspired and engaged to, to do all these things. Um, So um, to sort of wrap it up, because um, I, I know we want to get into the breakout sessions, what does it take to be innovative? And that's what we're sort of going to talk about in the breakout sessions, breakout sessions, sorry. Um, you know, we'd love to hear feedback about, you know, maybe what some of your clubs are doing, um, some things that have maybe worked or haven't worked for you. Um, and, you know, we just sort of want to share that information. We're going to do that for about 20 minutes, I think. And then um, we'll come back and we'll sort of, you know, report back and, and talk about what we sort of brainstormed together 
Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll sort of wrap it up after that. I think I covered everything. Is that all the spot? Is all, sorry for the little hiccup there halfway through. <laughs> I really <laughs> honestly happens. don't know how I do that. <laughs> I think that's the reality of our online world right now. So um, thank you so much, Julia. Hopefully I didn't talk too fast. No, <laughs> I have a tendency did. to do that. You did great. Thank you so thank much. You. And uh, so Susan's going to take us out into some breakout rooms together. There's no one saying anything right now, am I correct? You're correct. Have you broken this into rooms or not? I'm manually assigning. My auto assign isn't working. <laughs> uh, excited, bit by excited. Bit, the group is shrinking. <laughs> <laughs>
Mm, welcome back, everyone. <laughs> I don't know if all your groups were the same as ours, but we're caught midstream talking and then yes. Get to yes, we did that too. <laughs> yeah, we we got through everybody except one, and I apologize <laughs> for that, but uh yeah, we were, uh, yeah, it kind of got shortened a little bit, so. Oh, that's okay. Well, well, hopefully we'll be able to share, um, we'll have enough time to share. So we've got about 15 minutes for the facilitators of each group. We're just going to share real quickly some of the conversations that we had and some of the ideas that uh, were shared. So uh, maybe I'll start with you, Sue. Do you want to kick us off? Sure. So our group, uh, we, some have had success and some have had uh, not as much success with the, the Zoom uh, platform. A lot of clubs are trying, uh, doing uh, like one Zoom meeting, one in-person meeting if possible. Uh, the younger generation seems to like Zoom because they can do the uh, meetings in their car, on the phone, uh, going to and from. Uh, but uh, some of the older members, you know, that that is the big thing for them was, uh, you know, meeting in person. And so a lot of clubs are trying to do in person and Zoom to try and satisfy both things. Um, they're talking, a couple of clubs have tried doing the family membership and the corporate membership with varied success. Um, and uh, the, uh, the one thing that they had asked about was, um, uh, they had a couple people that because of Zoom meetings dis uh, asked if they could put their membership on hold or like take a leave. And there's no way in uh, like in the membership part, the club runner where you can put a, a thing on hold. You either have to cancel them right out or just uh, you, like you can't just put them on hold. So I know we had a similar situation in our club where there was two older members that just weren't um, enjoying the Zoom and whatever, and asked if they could take a leave for a year until they could see what was going on. So what we ended up having to do is cancel their membership, but they can be reactivated at any time. And we had to cancel the membership so you don't have to pay the district fees and, and the international fees for those two people. Um, so yeah, so there's, uh, there's been a little bit of things like that where people want to do something on hold or hold their membership until they see how things are working out. And uh, there isn't really a way to do that without totally losing them. Okay. Uh, anything else, Sue, or is that that sums uh, it up? No, I think I think yeah, it was mostly uh, you know they're everybody's dealing with the same issues everybody else is dealing. Fundraising is kind of messed up. Um, uh, uh, and Lauren just said in the chat, you can make uh, those members honorary members as well. Yeah. Uh, but the, but the thing is, is honorary members you have to pay the fees. So if your club is uh, fortunate enough to be able to have the money to pay those fees for honorary members, that's great. But some clubs, some that's of the smaller clubs, they can't afford that, so. Excellent, we're, okay. We're not paying, so we're, we're, we're gonna not actually move on. Sorry, Sherry, we're not gonna have enough time to talk about this particular issue for clubs. So I'm gonna leave that for, um, we'll post it up on the website. Penny, I'm sure can add to that through another forum on the website otherwise we won't get through everything tonight so thank you <laughs> sorry about that um okay thanks so much sue we'll move on to jim andrews your group oh there you are now? Okay, you are good you. yes great okay um it was kind of interesting that uh here a Lancaster club had bought a mic and a tripod. And so they were having some meetings outside, social distancing type things, but they also Zoom their meetings. So they can hit both sides. And I thought that was a great idea right now. And um, nice thing to try. We have not tried at our club any outdoor meetings. We haven't met since March. And it'd be nice to, to try that. Uh, Oh, and so uh, the other thing that I thought was interesting that people have been talking about is the four-way test at meetings. We have not said that at our meetings, but it would be a nice thing to have that as part of our meeting, like the pledge. And uh, that's something nice that I've picked up on. So, but as far as membership things, those were kind of where we talked about. One did talk about uh, some of the meals this time they're brown bagging uh, their meals at their meetings, which uh, great idea. 
it uh, keeps the cost down. And right now, with not knowing where food's from, I guess that's a great idea. So that's what I learned tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jim. All right. Now we have Jim Howden. Uh, what innovative ideas did your group come up with? Okay. <clears throat> Our group was fortunate to have a, a two relatively new members. So our discussion uh, essentially drifted on to managing the onboarding of new members and how to uh, engage them once they are members. So uh, some of the observations, a few observations was that uh, new members have trouble fitting in uh, uh, within various clubs or cliques. And uh, so that's an issue. Um, and um, sometimes they don't really know why they're joining the club. They don't understand Rotary. Um, they don't know where they're going to fit in, how they can fit in. So um, what came out of that discussion is that uh, there needs to be a mentoring committee or plan that uh, someone uh, guides the new members for the first uh, while, like you wouldn't, much like you wouldn't um, onboard a new employee. You don't usually say, here's your desk and go, go for it. There's somebody that actually shows you around the organization. So Rotary clubs need to do a better job at that because what happens is the new members don't, as you know, the new members don't feel that they're fitting in. So they drift away. Uh, they start, stop coming to meetings. Nobody follows up why they're not at the meetings, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, and, uh, Clubs have had mentoring programs in the past, and uh, the observation is that the mentors frequently drop the ball. So uh, the strategy is there, but uh, execution is not. So that's our comments. I think it's an excellent observation, actually. It's uh, once you get a new member, you want to keep a new, you want to keep them as members. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you to your team for providing that feedback. And Juliana, you're next. Okay. And I'm not muted. <laughs> um, so I, I guess, you know, as the under 40 contingent, um, our conversation sort of drifted towards, um, you know, how to, how to attract new members, how to attract younger members. Um, one of the things um, that you know obviously we're all in the same boat is you know regardless of size um and you know we i don't i we didn't quite have enough time to get through everybody but you know of the people that were able to kind of share a little bit um we had club sizes anywhere from you know 40 to 50 right down to 20. um but the challenge was the same across the board um so you know it was a matter of you know how do we attract members that are going to be able to have the time and and, and give the time and uh, you know that and and commit to, you know, joining and, and getting involved with, um, with some of these projects. Um, and it's a concern because, you know, they've got projects that, um, you know, we've done for years and years, and suddenly the membership isn't there to, uh, to pull it off. So um, we talked a little bit about that. Um, but we also had some great ideas uh, get tossed out. Um, Nancy um, from the Niagara, Col Niagara Falls Sunrise Club, um, you know, she, she shared something that their club is doing, which is, um, they've sort of um, transitioned to sort of a hybrid model, like Jim had uh, mentioned as well, where they're meeting in person for their breakfast, but then they're also doing Zoom as well. Um, so again, you know, they're, they're able to, you know, incorporate both sides. So if people were comfortable with going and meeting in person because they wanted that social interaction, they were able to do that. Um, for people that maybe like, you know what, I've, I've got a really busy day today, but I don't want to miss, um, they can just sign in on Zoom or something. Um, and the other thing that they've done there is um, they did away with their membership committee 
and the entire club. Uh, so all 32 of their members are now the membership committee. So they've really sort of taken ownership of, um, you know what, We're, we, all, we are all responsible for this. It can't just be on, you know, the plates of, you know, a handful of people. We all know people. We all know great people in our communities. We all should be making more of an effort to invite people to come out, see what we're all about. So I, I thought that was a really great idea. Um, we also talked about, you know, the use of just promoting the club, you know, activities and stuff in general. So at any events, you know, there was a lot of talk about brochures, about, you know, talking about, um, you know, what Rotary does and, and what we do. Um, again, it's all about, you know, providing that information. I mean, and, and I've, I, I don't think I said it in, during, during the slideshow, but I mean, how many of us have been asked how many times, what is Rotary? You know, and, um, and I certainly get that as a young person, you know, people my age will go, well, what is Rotary? What do you do? Like, you know, because they don't know what it is. Um, and then lastly, we just sort of talked about, well, okay, if we're trying to attract younger members, what are some of the challenges or hurdles that a younger member would have that would keep them from joining? So um, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, is it a cost issue? Is it a time issue? Maybe they have a job and that they'd like to get involved, but they're not able to take time out of their day um, or leave work for, you know, an hour or two once a week um, that, uh, you know, it just, it's a, it's a hurdle there. So maybe you think about, okay, um, can we do more Zoom? Can we think about switching our meeting time? Can we relax our rules about attendance so that maybe somebody doesn't have to be there for meetings all the time, but still wants to be involved? Um, we talked about, um, you know, getting families involved. Um, I come from a Rotary family. My dad uh, was a member and joined when I was nine. And so I grew up with the club and now I'm a member. And my husband gets told to come out and do a lot of things with us. He doesn't get invited. He gets told. Um, but, you know, when my daughter's old enough, she will come out to members. And so we talked about, um, you know, making some of our events um, whether they're fellowship or fundraisers, more family friendly. So, um, you know, instead of having a black tie gala where tickets are $100, um, maybe it's a family event that is a little more cost effective that it can involve the whole family. Um, so those were just some of the ideas that's that we excellent. kind of touched Wonderful. on a little bit. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm Juliana probably missing a lot of really club. good stuff. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> but, I know there's only so much time in an hour that we can yeah. do this, so I'll just quickly share with uh, what happened in my group. We had some really great conversations as well and some ideas. So some of them have already been shared here with the other groups, so I won't um, reiterate those. But one of the really cool things we heard was that they changed up the way in which the process of Rotary works. So typically a member would come in, they would have to be vetted by the board and there's this whole process they have to go through. So to try and uh, speed that up and to make it more interesting, one of our clubs actually asks every member to go out and bring forward the name of a potential member that they feel would be good for the club. They bring that list to the board. The board then pre-approves that list for membership. Then they have a social and they invite all of those potential members uh, to that social to introduce the concept of Rotary and how they could get involved. And as a result, their membership has gone up. I thought that was a fantastic way of sort of honoring the Rotary you know, process, but yet changing it in such a way that it's um, really helped to, um, to recruit more effectively and efficiently. Lots of surveys being done right now as well with existing members, former members, exit surveys, and finding out lots of really good information there. Um, talked about also different tiers of membership, so not categories, but also different tiers. And um, the other was dropping, another really cool thing is dropping the old events that maybe aren't, you know, bringing in the kind of um, vitality, I guess, as they used to, and changing it up and creating new ones. So one was a drive-through rib fest that happened versus the physical in-person rib fest, which resulted in some new recruitment of ideas and um, uh, new members and, and new ideas into the fundraising world. So 
So really great conversations. And I think it comes back to, you know, the fact that you've got what you need within your club. And if you have a small club, please uh, reach out to us. We have a, a small club innovation coach and the district can help you um, to, again, connect you with some other clubs that might be able to be mentors for you and, and begin to support the process. So um, it's been really exciting to hear all of this. I think just shifting our mindsets to one of innovation and vitality and growth and um, I think is going to go a long way for us and it, it, we, it's just going to spark some new conversations and it's going to have us function differently. It has no choice but to do that. The more you talk about it, the more things are going to happen. So let's just all talk about innovation and creativity and, and let's be brave and try new things. Um, so we're just going to ask you in the last couple of minutes while we're doing uh, a few of the final wrap up things tonight, just to give us some feedback on what you thought of today's session. Uh, this is going to be the first of a series of them. So we would love uh, you to let us know what you liked about it. And if there's any ideas that you have, innovative ideas for what we could do, <laughs> uh, we would appreciate those. So I wanted to um, encourage everyone to uh, read the district newsletter coming out very shortly, um, where the innovation article that I went through at the beginning will be in there. We'll also be posting it up on the website. I'm also going to be uh, writing up something on what a membership innovation coach is. And uh, that will be just to give you a little snippet. I kind of see it as someone who's going to harness the innovation, innovative ways to bring members aboard. Um, as opposed to perhaps the administrative role that a membership chair in your club might have right now. And I love the idea of the entire club as your membership committee because I know one person is responsible for it. But if we have a champion in each club who is having the conversation about bringing in innovative uh, ways to bring in members, um, then that conversation again will continue to go. So um, to wrap us up here, I'm going to um, first ask uh, Al Luchin. Al is going to talk to you a little bit about some of the upcoming PI sessions this month, and then we're going to finish it off um, with Frank, and then uh, also let you know on October 27th, the next Rotary Web Talk session will be on using Club Runner. And so all of our sessions are up on the district website on the calendar and actually it's right on the homepage. If you just go to upcoming events, it'll give you the series of what we've got going on. So I will uh, turn it over to Al to tell us a little bit about the upcoming PI sessions. Yeah, thank you very much, Angela. Very uh, inspirational hour. And I really enjoyed your opening remarks and congrats to you and your team. You're doing some awesome work. So just a little bit about the uh, uh, social media training we got coming up. So we do have a big session tomorrow night. It's our launch session uh, from 6.30 to 7.30. We're calling it uh, social media training. Uh, if you haven't signed up or registered, please do so. You can, uh, you can go on to the upcoming events on the uh, district website and uh, just press that. It'll take you to the uh, landing page and you can, you can sign up for social media 101. That's tomorrow night. And then we have a second session coming up on October the 8th also at 630. So when you're on the site uh, later tonight or tomorrow, you can you can sign up for both. We'd love to have you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Angela, for the opportunity. You're welcome. Thanks very much, Al. Um, I'll also be sending out an invitation to our membership uh, chairs and uh, club presidents. There's a session that District 7080 is doing, um, and they've got a, a really dynamic speaker who is going to talk about the next generation of Rotarians. So uh, look for that in your inboxes. Uh, that should be coming out tomorrow morning. Okay, I'm going to ask our district governor, Frank Adamson, to share a few closing remarks for us. Thank you so much, Angela. Um, my apologies for uh, stepping in late. Uh, we had a zone district governor's uh, meeting at the same time tonight, but it was boring. So I thought I'd jump out of that and come <laughs> I'm into my own district's <laughs> meeting, so uh, good to be with you. Uh, good to see the great turnout. Uh, just wanted to thank Angela and Juliana uh, for uh, pulling this all together and for all the great work you're doing on behalf of the district. And for everybody, all, all Rotarians, for all the good work you're doing. So again, I, I, what I've picked up out of this is I'm stopping using the words meetings. I love gatherings or, or events, and I think that's got to be more of what we, uh, what we do. Uh, meetings are boring. Um, I can tell you that as governor, I go to <laughs> way too many meetings. I'd much rather be at some gatherings, but uh, 
uh, just just thanks to everybody for uh, uh, for sharing and participating. Uh, we've got a great team. You're all part of that team. And uh, as you all know or should know, or if you don't know, my goal is to uh, have every club increase their membership by four members uh, by the end of uh, by the end of my term as your as your governor. And if each and every one of us takes on that responsibility, um, we can actually surpass those numbers. So. Again, uh, thanks everyone and uh, uh, thank you, Angela. Welcome, thank you so much, Frank. And thanks everyone for joining us. Go out there, get innovative, bring some new vitality to your clubs and I look forward to seeing you on the next Rotary Web Talks. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Everyone, have a good night. You too. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm gonna go eat my dinner. <laughs> I have to eat mine too.